Welcome to this week's In The City. There's no Amy this week, I'm afraid she's stuck with me, but I'm pleased to say I'm with Lee Peltier and Scott Malone in the studio. Thanks for coming, boys. I appreciate your time. No worries. First things first, let's look at Leeds. Disappointing, but, um, you know, I mean, these results do happen, don't they? It's about picking ourselves up for red in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, we were disappointed not to come away with anything from the game. Um, I think the first half, we didn't start too well. Um, allowed Leeds to get on top of us. After they scored the, the, a, a good goal from the lad uh, Moat, uh, I think we, we started to have a goal, but obviously it was a bit too late. But um, we are, were disappointed, all the lads are disappointed that we um, couldn't do it for 90 minutes. One of the highlights from the beanback was um, you getting involved with their manager on the touchline. That looked a bit tasty. Yeah, well, he was, he was doing my head in a bit. Like, he kept pretending to grab the ball and leaving it to go, time wasting. And obviously the ball was there and he was, he was trying to time waste, so I was just doing what I could to, get, to grab hold of the ball and give him a little shove. So, yeah. How frustrating is it, obviously, we know we're struggling in front of goal a little bit, but in terms of at the back, that's a, the best record for 12 years, four games without conceding the goal. Is that frustrating, Scott, that maybe you guys aren't getting the credit you deserve? Not really, no, because at the end of the day, we all both know that defenders never get any credit, to be fair. You've, got, you've only got to look at the top players in the world that they pick their, their 11 every year, and it's mainly strikers, so it's not really. Um, we've, We've only lost, what, three out of 20, 24, 25 games? Um, so I think, yeah, we, defensively we, we're solid. I don't think we look like conceding. I think it took a very good goal against Leeds to to break the record of, of the clean sheets, but um, we'll, we'll get there. It's, everyone has a goal drought now and again, but we're doing, we're doing the best we can to, to win matches. And, and like I said, I think, well, we've only lost three out of 24, so I don't think it's... Um, Panic station, Jet. Three points outside the playoffs. Still, that says it all, really, doesn't it? I think as a squad, you need to you need to hang in there until after Christmas. If you can keep in touch with the top six to, to more top eight, then you've got you've got you've got you've got a chance going into the last few months of the season. Yeah. Obviously, Reading here on the weekend. Um, initiative by the club this week to get more fans in. Young, young supporters have really taken to this, expecting a bit of noise here for the first time, which is really going to be appreciated by you guys, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The more, the merrier, as they say. Um, obviously, the, the lads appreciate all the support that the fans give us. And obviously, if, if there's more of them, we're going to get better support. And I think the lads thrive off, off the support we get from, from the fans. So hopefully we can get um, a good attendance on Saturday. It's going to be a tough game against a, a good team, but uh, as I say, the, the fans can spare us on. That's it for the first team for now. Let's have a look at what's been going on around the club with our club roundup. On Thursday morning, it was announced that Tommy O'Sullivan and Jazzy Barn and Bob have extended their loans with Newport County until January the 2nd. Both members of Cardiff City's under-21 development side have played in four matches for the League 2 side. While Tommy scored his first professional goal from long range in the Exiles' 4-1 away win over Bristol Rovers. As the link between Cardiff City and Belgium side KVK continues, academy manager Jal Salstreit visited Cardiff at the beginning of the week. Jal attended training sessions at various age groups of Cardiff City Academy and development sides here at the Vale Training Ground. It will be a busy weekend for Cardiff City Academy as the under-18s face Queen's Park Rangers on Saturday the 7th of November at Leckwith Athletic Stadium before the under-19s play Goitra away on Sunday. Meanwhile, Kevin Nicholson's development side are in action on Monday the 9th, taking on their Barnsley counterparts at 2pm at Leckwith. Congratulations are in order for Cardiff City FC Foundation coach Damien Flynn, who picked up an award at the Nation Radio Sports Awards on Wednesday evening. Damien was deservedly named Community Coach of the Year 2015 at the ceremony for his work with Cardiff City Foundation. Cardiff City are proud to say that the House of Sport has continued to grow with recent construction of the Cardiff City House of Sport 3. Playing a vital role for Cardiff City Football Club and the local sports community, the new addition to the training centre boasts four indoor tennis courts and two additional netball courts, along with the first roller rink of its kind in Wales. On Thursday the 5th and Friday the 6th of November, IntroBiz are holding Wales Business Expo at House of Sport. The two-day event brings together Welsh, UK and international businesses to exhibit and network here in South Wales, while Cardiff City also have their own stand at the Expo, with great prices up for grabs. 
Cardiff City's women's side defeated Port Talbot Town Ladies 3-0 in the first round of the Women's Welsh Premier League Cup on Sunday. With the score 0-0 at the end of the 90 minutes, the City women turned on the style in extra time, scoring three goals to secure their place in the next round. Cameron Jones came down to the stadium to meet with Cardiff City FC sponsor Newfield Health this Thursday morning. The City striker joined representatives of the Health and Wellbeing Service for a quick checkup in the physio room at Cardiff City Stadium. As part of our commitment to making match day experience at Cardiff City Stadium as good as possible for our home supporters, a 10-feet Rico HD projector has been installed in the concourse of the USW stand. There, fans will be able to watch our extensive match day TV programming pre-match and at half-time. On Tuesday evening, Cardiff City played host to its first beanback of the season. Over 500 City fans were in attendance at the Rico Diamond Suite to watch the action via a stream from Ellen Road, with live commentary from Ashley James and City legend Danny Gabadon. Watch out for our next beanback when the Bluebirds visit Hull City on Tuesday the 12th of January. So that's what's been going on around the club this week. Turn back to the boys and we've had some Twitter questions for you two, quite a few actually. I've got a few here I'm going to throw at you. Um, first one, Scott from Callum Ellis, at Callum underscore Ellis 7. Have you scored a better goal than that one against QPR? And if so, what was it? Um, I scored a few at Bournemouth. I was playing one further forwards, playing left midfield for a while. And I think it was uh, Gillingham in the FA Cup. Run from the edge of my own box, all the way to the edge of their box, cut in right foot, top corner. I think that was, I think that was my best one. Um, but for importance and getting a point, I think the QPR, QPR one's up there. Pelts, you got anything to compare to that? <laughs> no. You don't shoot. <laughs> Barely got on me on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question from uh, Jacob Price, at Jacob Price, 1927. How much do you guys appreciate the away support? You always go over and clap the supporters, but how much do they help when you're away from home at tough places like Tuesday night? Yeah, definitely. I said before about the, the fans getting behind us. It gives the lads a, a, an extra little bit to, to, to get go to go on. Um, I think the the supporters who travel away it's very good of them to travel, especially like on a Tuesday night and and it's stuff like way, that. It? It's a long way, and a lot of places are far away from Cardiff, so the it's the lads appreciate them getting up there and getting behind the lads. In reference to another full-back, Kevin McNaughton, who was here the other night to uh, meet the supporters, he went in the away end for the second half. For the question of uh, CCFC Central, who said, if he was suspended or injured, would you ever consider a, a game in with that lot? <laughs> yeah, I, I would do, yeah. Like I've sat in with fans before many times, but obviously when we're here at home, we have when we're not in the squad, we have things that we have to do around the, the stadium. So uh, I don't think we get a chance to do that really. Hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of In The City. We'll leave you with an interview I did earlier today with the skipper David Marshall. And to read this interview in full, pick up a copy of The Blue Bid on Saturday, the official Cardiff City Matchday programme. First up, and the skipper reflected on an excellent defensive record this past month, despite the lack of goals. We like to think that when you're not uh, conceding goals, you win more games. So it's, in, in that respect, it's been disappointing. but. It's been a team effort to to not concede goals and keep a lot of clean sheets. So um, we just have to do more as a team to create chances and score goals, as well as obviously keeping it tight as we have done at the back. But uh, disappointing because although keeping clean sheets are good, it's one in games in this division that gets you up the league. So um, probably take a few more defeats if we could get a couple of victories just to get us back into the playoffs. In reference to Saturday's opponents, Reading. Marshall reflected on the Royal start to the campaign as being similar to that of ourselves. So oh, it's a big game for both both teams. We'll be looking to bounce back after a disappointing one at Leeds. So as I say, I think we're three points off sixth at the minute. Um, but as we were up third, fourth, fifth away on the in the playoffs early in the season, we know we've got the quality to be there. It's just uh, putting in a sort of complete performance and and getting those goals at home. And I don't think anybody enjoys coming to our stadium. So I think that's a We've got a good record there, so hopefully we can continue that. Cardiff City Football Club has invited all season ticket holders to bring juniors to both of our Reading and Burnley fixtures this November. It's an initiative the skipper feels is worthwhile as the Bluebirds look to move further up the table. I think it's a great um, initiative, obviously, this season, but can take their kids for free. 
um, our kids for three. So um, obviously the to get the attendances up, to get the atmosphere up, um, everything helps. I mean, obviously to get kids in as well for the obviously the long term future for the club, it's great. Um, but it helps us. Uh, the more fans, the more noise, the more atmosphere. Um, it definitely helps the team. I think you can see that with the leads uh, on Tuesday night. The fans were great. So if we can get our crowd behind us. Obviously, it's up to us to give them something to shout about in terms of goals and winning games, but um, as I say, there's a little help when it comes to that. You can watch an extended version of this show with more from David Marshall, Lee Peltier and Scott Malone only on Cardiff City Player HD.